what is up ladies and gentlemen in this video i wanted to talk a little bit about um the scene in question of after the house fight after everything's kind of come to a head and we're in the cool off period hawks joined back with his friends he's working with them again and, you know they go into the dojo where sam and tori are going at it and duking it out and they're like right guys stop the fight's over and then tori's like you know traitors and all that kind of jazz um, and then turns to Hawk and says, you better watch your back. Now, I know some people um, have been asking me this in live streams, what I think her revenge could be. I think it's well documented that people seem to think that her, perhaps Kyla, because of what he did to, you know, what Hawk did to Brooks, Kyla might be out for revenge too. Um, and maybe Robbie, just because, you know, it, he'll be part of the crew then. Um, they might shave his hair off. They might shave his mohawk off. Um... But I'm going to put a different spin on it. And again, as with any theory, it's just harmless speculation. It's just nothing more than a bit of fun. You know, don't take it so literally. If it doesn't happen, then don't get, you know, upset and don't be disappointed. Um, because we ha we still have so much time between now and Season 4. Um, there's probably going to be wacky theories coming out every other week. Um, so, you know, this could be just another one in a long line. But I'm going to talk a little bit about why the threat might actually backfire now this ties into a video that i have done already and that is hawk's revenge you know the video where it covers hawk getting you know just unleashing uh the rage machine within him on kyla's friend brooks and all the years of pent-up anger and, and bullying and frustration and isolation and powerlessness he lashes it out straight into brooks's face quite literally and I go on to say in that video, as I'm going to say here and expand upon, Tori in that scene is looking to the side, you know, kind of in like, you know, not, I wouldn't say shock, but sort of like surprise. Like she's taken aback by it a little bit. Like she's you're like, oh my God. You know, and then she just so casually threatens him at the end of this episode. Now, besides Robbie, I don't see Tori giving Hawk too much of a problem if he's in rage mode. And I don't see Kyla giving Hawk too much of a problem. The only one that's realistically going to give Hawk any problems is Robbie. That's it. So her making this threat to him, you know, I find interesting. But also, I find it very strange. Because she knows exactly what he's capable of when he's pissed. When he's angry, she knows exactly what he is capable of. And Kyla as well. Both of them know, right, two of the, 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 the new students in the new Cobra Kai know exactly what Hawk is capable of. And lest we not forget, if it wasn't for plot armor, especially in season three, not so much season two because Hawk, you know, got beaten around like a ragdoll. But in season three especially, if it's not for plot, I'd say Ro Hawk is right up there with Miguel and Robbie. A hundred percent. He's right up there. Now, I know you could make a case for Sam beating him. You can make that argument. Um, but I'm talking about just in, in linear perspective that Miguel and Robbie are by far and above the two MVPs of the young generation with Sam probably cutting in just behind them. Um, but again, if it wasn't for plot, I would consider Hawk to be right up there. Because as I've said, while Miguel was in the hospital trying to recover from his injury, while Robbie was getting beat down on in juvie, Hawk was still training. Hawk was still in the, do the dojo. He was still trying to be the best. He was still training, and he was training under Crease. So he has Silver, Crease, and uh, now Daniel under his belt. You know, he has the three senseis under his belt. And I feel like until Miguel gets back, m m until Miguel gets back to full strength, Miyagi Do, Miyagi Fang, Eagle Do, whatever you want to call it, they need Hawk. They really need him. And that was case in point in the house fight. The minute he switched sides. The dynamic shifted, the power level shifted, the tide turned, and he made just an instant impact. You know, him and Dimitri were basically doing their version of what I believe to be the wheel technique, which I hope we'll see them do next season. Um, but it was sort of like they were doing that in the house, just taking it to all the Cobra Kai uh, fighters, one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. So they all know what Hawk's capable of. And I'm going to set the scene here. Tori, maybe Robbie, and Kyla, and, you know, the Cobra Kai crew, they approach uh, Hawk, like, in the dead of night, you know? Hawk's by himself, and this is their chance to get a bit of revenge. A bit like how Hawk, Mitch, and the other Cobra Kai uh, dude, I forgot his name, they attacked Nate after, you know, they'd raised money for Miguel at the car wash, and then, you know, they let the shortest kid in the, in the pack, 
hand all the money. You know, Jesus. Um, but sort of like that. They catch him while he's alone. And this is why if Robbie's there, then, you know, it won't backfire and they'll go full on ahead and his hair will be shaved or something like that. But I do feel like if it's just Tori and maybe Kyla or just, you know, Kyla and a couple of the Cobra Kai goons, um, maybe Tori's not even there. You know, maybe it's just Kyla and the boys. I could see this backfiring on them massively. Just because Hawk is with the good guys now, don't make the mistake in thinking he's still not the same guy he he has been. He has a lot to work through. He, you don't just turn off what he went through in season three like that. You don't just flick a switch and that's it. He's still got that, which is why I'm so excited for his arc next season, because it's going to be about him, you know, redeeming himself for trashing the Miyagi-Do, stealing the Medal of Honor, you know, all the things he's done to Sam, going up against Miguel, you know, resisting against him, you know, resisting against Johnny for a bit, coming to terms with Daniel and apologizing and owning up for what he's done. And Hawk is no stranger to offense. He knows offense, but Daniel can teach him defense and he can teach him balance. That is something that Hawk desperately needs. Out of the, the merger, right, the merger of the two dojos, with Robbie no longer being there, um, obviously, I've said many times before, season five, I, I see Robbie going back to Daniel, 100%. It's just, again, it's an extended uh, Daniel's arc. But on Hawk, I see him filling that void that was left by Robbie. I see him filling that slot where Daniel sees a kid that's had a really rough go of it, that's developed all of his inner pain and insecurities into frustration, anger, and rage. And Daniel will see that and use his Miyagi, the teachings he learned from Miyagi to help Hawk. I feel like Hawk will be the student that he bonds with the most next season because there's so much history there that these two haven't, they haven't yet to address. Like I said, the, the, the Miyagi-Do trashing, the Medal of Honor stealing, you know, all of that. You know, vandalizing the car, vandalizing Miyagi's car. Do you remember that scene when, you know, Sam was like, Dad, he looks at the car and then it's just, you know, Bonsai, Daniel son. It plays the flashback and then I'm like, oh man, got choked up a little bit there. Um, they use Miyagi so well in this show. But I feel like Hawk will be the prime student for Daniel out of all the new bunch. Like, obviously, Miguel will be the main, you know, front runner. Um, but you know what I mean? Hawk will probably be the one that he takes more of a shine to because Hawk has the most complexity. He has the most to deal with. And I feel like now that Hawk is with Dimitri, he's with Miguel. And shout out to Dimitri, all right? Because in the house fight, you know, when Tori's like, you better watch your back. Dimitri just says he won't have to. He's got friends watching it for him. I was like, fuck it, man. Woo! <laughs> Get it, Dimitri. Um, so he's with his friends, you know? And that's why, no, he's not a spy. I have to keep mentioning that, mentioning that every now and then. Um, but he's with his friends. He's in the perfect place to find that balance. And I tell you what, a composed hawk could potentially be a, probably the strongest fighter, if I'm, I'm being honest. Like, Miguel and Robbie, yeah, they're great. But the way, but Hawk's ruthlessness is above them for me. Like, this guy don't stop, he won't stop with one punch. He'll continue. Like, if he's in the mood, he'll keep going. He'll, he'll really keep going. Um, Miguel and Robbie are much more, they're less hits and more damage. So, for example, Hawk may do 10 hits. Robbie and Miguel will do, like, 5 hits. Um, or five kicks or something. Um, and obviously, I'm not saying that Hawk's going to be better than them. I'm just saying that he could really stake a claim. You know, remember when Miguel gets back to the school and Hawk says, Hey, you're back on your feet now. Better get ready to defend that title. I'm just saying. I, I'm just throwing it out there. But this whole idea of Tori making this threat and, you know, saying you better watch your back, I feel like one major twist that could happen is they think they're going there to attack Hawk. They think they're going there to get the upper hand on him. And then he just absolutely flips out and just goes ham on every single one of them. Like, I could totally see that happening. And then you cut that, like, that that, that could be something around mid-season. And then you cut that with, you know, Daniel and him, you know, trying to work through the problem, trying to work through the situation. You know, how, why are you so angry, Eli? What, where does all this come from? And then that ties into him sorting it out. Um, so if this does play out and Tori does make this threat... You know, yes, you could go the convenient way of maybe cutting his mohawk off, but I feel like it might make for a much more interesting scenario if they ch if they go and approach Hawk, and they actually end up being the ones that get their asses beat. Because, as I've said, I feel like Cobra Kai is going to win the tournament. 
So you can't have them win all season. You need them to lose so their win feels earned. It feels justified. Not just so that, you know, you need it to feel like, you know, all hope is lost kind of thing. But what you can do is show that Cobra Kai and, you know, the new merge dojo, both are going to just be in a constant battle with each other across the season. Win, lose, win, lose, win, lose. And then Cobra Kai wins. And then the next season or whatever is is about finishing that off and, you know, dealing with all that stuff. But it's just something I can see happening. I could see this threat massively backfiring on whoever's involved. And, you know... I, I've said it from day one. I know Hawk is now in, for all intents and purposes, he's in Miyagi-Do or Ego Fang or whatever, but let's just say Miyagi-Do just for, you know, convenience sake. Um, he's in Miyagi-Do now, but he's still Hawk. You know, he's still got that inner anger and inner rage, and he's probably, in my opinion, the most aggressive fighter in that dojo. The most aggressive fighter. That's why they need him. They need him to give them an edge. Because as great as Miguel is, he's the champ, as up and coming as Dimitri is, as as much potential as Chris has, they do, they need Hawk. They don't have another Hawk type figure. Um, as much as Sam is, you know, a leader and the heir to Daniel's legacy, um, Hawk for me gives them that much more grit, you know? So this is something I could just see happening. Um, you guys wanted me to do a video on it, so I was happy to oblige and talk a little bit about it. Um, I've said in streams many times that I think this whole thing's gonna backfire right in their face I think if they approach Hawk in the dead of night They're not gonna get the upper hand on him at all like they, they may think they do and then They're beating down on him and then he just snaps like I can picture it They're beating down on him. They think they're winning and then he just snaps he goes absolutely berserk and then you know goes ham on every single person involved um, but then again you could go the convenient safe route of you know Maybe they do shave his mohawk, or maybe they give him a scar, or maybe they give him a second second scar or something. Who knows? Who knows? It's anyone's guess. But um, guys and girls, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of uh, this, you know, video of mine. Um, leave your suggestions, you know, down below in the comment section of things you'd like me to talk about, things you'd like me to cover. I've got a whole load of things uh, lined up and coming. And also, you know, we're closing in on 5K subs. I cannot thank you guys enough. Um, this isn't just a Cobra Kai specific channel that, you know, this is everything, you know, Star Wars, Marvel, DC. It's just like a film pop culture discussion channel. So make sure you guys hit that subscription button. I will see you all in another video soon. And as Dimitri would say in the King's English, it's good old fashioned bedwetting.